Hi guys, is this like the world's worst lighting? I'm back today with another sort of casual video. I felt like it was finally time for me to film this video that has been in the works in my brain for over a year. I'm gonna show you how I have styled outfits with clothes that I bought directly from Gossip Girl. Outfits as seen on Gossip Girl, but then seen on me. No, these were not the actual physical pieces that were worn on Gossip Girl. I've seen over the years people have won those items in like auctions and stuff like that. These are the exact same pieces some with like slight color variations but that have been worn in episodes of Gossip Girl by Blair Serena and Jenny this has kind of turned into like an ongoing shopping challenge for me I started this last year because I was re-watching Gossip Girl for my annual like I, I'm like never not re-watching Gossip Girl but I was doing like a dedicated re-watch from the pilot last Christmas like over that holiday season and I remember thinking to myself when I was younger and I would watch the show for reference I am the same age as Taylor Momsen and Taylor Momsen was the same age as Jenny was in the show so 14 year old Jenny is like going to Constance and I was 14 year old Samantha going to a similar sort of like college prep school where I had to wear a uniform and one of the things that got me through high school was accessorizing my uniform thank god I was allowed to and getting that inspiration directly from Gossip Girl so Gossip Girl kind of like saved my high school experience from otherwise being absolutely abhorrent all that to say if you know me at all in real life, you know that Gossip Girl just has such a special place in my heart and it always, always will. And during my rewatch last Christmas, I was thinking like I grew up really idolizing the show and it was very aspirational for me. And it is a little funny, like however many years later, some things happen in my life sometimes where I'm like, this is kind of Gossip Girl of me. Oops. And it's just funny how I guess being like 14 and watching the show, I could have never imagined that I would be like living in New York for 12 years on my own, getting to go to the places I get to go to, doing the things I get to do with the people that I know. It's just so crazy. And I feel like sometimes I get into a little bit of a rut with clothes that I'm wearing. Just because I know what I love and I know what feels good on me, you may know, obviously I'm wearing a shirt right now, but I'm a huge Realization Par fan. And yes, there is a part three video that is probably coming in like two weeks. I feel like that's a fair estimate. I love brands like Realization Par, Meow, Daniel Guzio. I try not to shop fast fashion at all anymore. Zara's kind of like the closest that I get and even then it's so sparingly that I will go there but I really do enjoy thrifting the online I wanted a challenge to kind of like explore some different designers and look for some more vintage silhouettes I felt like it would be a nice thing for little 14 year old Samantha if I could find some of these pieces that I grew up watching on TV and thinking that they were so cool and being able to like incorporate them into my current lifestyle now it has been just such a fun shopping challenge for me I highly recommend if there's a show that you guys are obsessed with there are so many great archives I used archives from tumblr independent blogs Poshmark sellers eBay Mercari sellers where they have dedicated accounts to the clothes that have been worn on Gossip Girl it was really easy to find things and then I kind of made like a running list of pieces that I was interested in digging for further I don't even think I bought directly from any of those like dedicated accounts I think I just ended up stumbling upon things elsewhere from people that didn't even know that these were items from Gossip Girl. Thus, I was able to get a really good deal on a lot of these pieces. And then I also found a few things on the Real Real. So I just want to show you guys. And this video is genuinely just meant to be like shopping inspiration for you, styling inspiration. You can't really shop anything from this video, but I'll leave some interesting finds linked down below and like all of the resources that I used. But yeah, this was just such a fun shopping challenge for myself this past year. And it's still ongoing. Like I still have things that I'm looking for, a way to shop sustainably, a way to pay homage to my favorite TV show and just a way to get out of my kind of typical comfort zone of like what everyone else is wearing and bring back some styles and designers that I think still fit really easily into my modern day lifestyle. But anyway, I feel like I've been rambling way too much. I have notes on my phone so I can tell you guys about all of these pieces. I have seven things to show you. I'm just going to go over the Gossip Girl episode that they're from, tell you how I found the piece. I will insert photos and stuff of how I have styled it in my real life. Okay, so first I have two jackets to share. Incidentally enough, they're both Tory Burch. One of the things I loved about this challenge is that I was going back to so many designers that I was obsessed with in middle school and high school like Tory Burch and Marc Jacobs. Admittedly, I don't really turn to those designers anymore, but it was so fun to revisit them and I feel like I got amazing deals on these two jackets. I'm also going to tell you the name of the piece to the best of my knowledge if you want to try and find the piece for yourself, but it's a chocolate brown color and it has this red 
uh, detailing. Normally I hate red, but it's not a lot here, so it doesn't really bother me. But you can see it has like a red kind of coated leather lining there. So this piece is the Tory Burch Sergeant Pepper Leather Military Jacket in brown, obviously. It does come in some other colors though, but I got it in brown. Serena wore this jacket in brown and she wore it in the episode All About My Brother, season one, episode 16. She just wears it to school over her uniform. This was one of the first pieces I tried to look for when I decided to start this challenge. I don't know why I was just always drawn to this jacket on Serena. I felt like it would be a really good basic to own because I don't own any brown jackets. And I have a black leather biker jacket and a black leather blazer. But I thought that this military inspired leather jacket was really, really nice. I love the like oversized hardware. It's like probably difficult to see on camera, but it's like tortoise shell buttons with these like large gold little Tory Burch emblems. I got this jacket from eBay for $144 in a size eight. I read a ton of listings for this jacket and a lot of people said that it ran small. I measured this jacket against other pieces that I owned. I was so happy that the seller sold it to me for $144 because if you look on Poshmark, a lot of the like Gossip Girl accounts were selling this jacket for like $500. Understandably so, because I'm pretty sure a Tory Burch leather jacket retails for like almost $1,000. And this one is in great condition. It has some kind of wear in certain places and it's heavily patinaed in other places, but I think it looks amazing. It doesn't take away from the jacket at all for me. This has been a really great piece to throw on in those transitional seasons. It fits really nice. It's super like form fitting. So if I wanted it to be a bit more oversized, I should have probably gotten a 10 or a 12. And that's another thing that I am very familiar with when it comes to like high end designer brands. They tend to run small. So like I'm usually not an eight in things, but for a jacket, I definitely was right. Like it barely, I don't even think I would really button it up. I just like to wear it open over like a skims dress or my realization long Allegra dress or like a little mini. I've even worn this with just jeans and a little white tee. And it's nice to have something that feels really luxe. It's just like so beautifully made. The attention to detail on a lot of designer items is just unparalleled. It's super unique. Obviously I've never seen anyone in real life with this jacket. So I was the most excited about this find, I think. I don't wear it a whole lot. That's okay. Maybe I can challenge myself to wear it a bit more this coming year. The next jacket I have to show you is also Tory Burch. And this might be out of everything that I'm sure, this is my most worn item. Like I wore this so much. This was one of the first things that I got when I decided to start this challenge because I accidentally found it on the real real. I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is the Tory Burch Mercedes patent leather trench. I got it from the real real for $147. You guys, this jacket retails for almost $1,500. Like I found the listings for its retail value. No, $147 on the real real. It is my favorite jacket. It's the thing I get the most compliments on. Like I said, I found it accidentally right when I decided to begin this challenge. I just typed in like Tory Burch patent leather coat and it was on the real real and I was like there's no way that's the same coat and it was Blair wears this in a thin line between Chuck and Nate season one episode 13 it's again just a jacket that she wears over her school uniform Blair's looks like a true true navy I have never seen seen it listed anywhere in a navy. Mine is black, but I'm not quite sure if like the lighting of the filming just made it look navy or if there is a navy one that exists somewhere. I'm not really sure. This one is also an eight and it fits a bit looser than the military jacket does, but I'll try and do a close up shot of some of the details on this jacket. This is just the coolest jacket that I own. So I got it, like I said, last winter, right at the beginning of 2023 when I started this challenge and I've worn it, you guys, so many times. Anytime it rains, I'm like, I'm wearing this jacket because it has these ginormous pockets that are specifically for an umbrella. Like you can put an umbrella in here comfortably and walk around and you don't even think about it. It has this like satin silk lining or whatever. There's a pocket that goes through here to the umbrella pocket. It has these amazing oversized buttons. I have lost one of them, but that's okay because I wear it so much. Like I feel like I'm not surprised that I lost one. I've worn it a bunch of times to the jazz club, to Mulberry, to butterfly like I wear it out at night a lot it just looks so good over little evening dresses it looks really sleek really sophisticated night out on the town it's raining it doesn't matter I put this jacket on and it's still like super smart it doesn't have a hood but like I said it has the pocket for the umbrella I've also worn it during the daytime and it just makes me feel like so put together and so cool I have always wanted to thrift a Burberry trench coat like the classic one I just haven't found one that fits my size.
size and the specifications that I'm looking for, but this has been my go-to trench coat. And I don't have like a trench or raincoat otherwise. So I guess I didn't realize that this just perfectly filled a hole in my closet that I was missing. I just wear it all the time. Anytime it's raining, I'm like, perfect. I'll just wear my Tory Burch. And obviously it's gotten wet and it's completely fine. It's patent leather. I think it still looks so beautiful. It looks black to me. Like I really think it's black. So I'm just, I'm not sure if there's a navy one somewhere out there or if Blair's was black and looked navy on camera, I'm not sure. This is without a doubt like my most worn piece. And I'm so grateful that this whole thing pushed me to look for something like this because now I like can't imagine my closet without it. So actually when I bought the Tory Burch trench coat, I also found at the same time this Mark by Marc Jacobs cardigan. So I got these in the same order. This is called the Etta sequin cardigan and it's Mark by Marc Jacobs. And I found it on the Real Real for $40. And again, like some of these Gossip Girl dedicated sellers on Poshmark or eBay or whatever were selling this cardigan for like $200. And I was like, mm. I got it in black. It also comes in a silvery color. It's been worn by two different people. So it was worn by Serena in season two, episode 12. It's a wonderful lie. She just wears this silver version over her school uniform. But Jenny wears it in season three, episode 21, ex-husbands and wives in the black when they go to this gala for the New York Public Library and she wears it as like a little shrug over her evening gown. That was what I was looking for, was something that I could wear on a night out that would look kind of special over an evening dress. I don't really have a lot of cardigans like that or any like shrugs or boleros or anything like that. So I thought that this would be a good addition. And it is what it also isn't and I'll explain why. As I'm sure you can see, the cardigan is fully sequined. It looks so beautiful in the light, but the entire thing is sequins. Look at my hair, you guys. Like, what do you think happens? Even when I first tried this on, I got my hair tangled in the back of the cardigan. And I was like, oh, okay. So I can only wear this out if my hair is going to be up. So I haven't worn it that much for that reason. Look, I literally just got hair stuck in it right now. I haven't worn it that much for this reason. And I just can't wrap my head around how Blake Lively was wearing the silver version of this like to school like obviously that's so impractical and would be really annoying but here's another one TV magic obviously I do love it it just didn't quite satisfy what I needed it to because it's not something I can just throw on easily over a dress for a night out like I have to consciously think oh am I gonna put my hair up with this otherwise it's a no-go but for how inexpensive it was I definitely don't mind I got it in a small it fits perfectly it's like not quite cropped but short enough that it's still I think flattering for wearing with a nice dress. Like it doesn't look slouchy or oversized or anything. And it obviously looks so nice in the light. That's one of the things that I feel like this whole shopping challenge just reminded me of is like early 2000s fashion was all about the sequins. And I'm like, we need to bring back the sequins guys. Like maybe not as over the top and ostentatiously as we did in 2005, 2006, but like sequins are fun. I like a little sparkle. I like a little glitz and glam. Like let's bring it back. The next piece is probably, oh God, I keep saying like everything's my favorite. This might be one of my favorites because it was so special. This piece is also Tory Birch. This is, I'm pretty sure, just a sequin shift dress. I don't know if it has a specific name. I couldn't find one. This was worn by Serena in the pilot when her and Dan go to the Kiss on the Lips party. You may have seen this dress if you watched my birthday vlog this year because I got this in time to wear to my 30th birthday. And I feel like that was a big deal. Like I wasn't feeling particularly excited about turning 30 and I kind of was at a loss for what to wear because I was like, this is such a special birthday. I was finding it hard to top outfits that I'd worn in the past. And also like top what I wear on a normal night out because I feel like I just dress up all the time anyway and when you have such a big momentous occasion it's like oh how do I outdo myself and I think the only thing that felt right was wearing the dress that Serena wore on the pilot paying homage in that way just felt perfect I was so so happy I was so comfortable I'm not sure how or when I'll be able to wear this dress again because now it's just forever in my mind my 30th birthday dress but it was such a steal you guys it has a Tory Burch tag but it also has a Bergdorf tag and so I was able to find that it was sold on Bergdorf for like $800. I got it on Poshmark for $120. I got it in a large because I just could tell that the seller who was selling the large was like willing to negotiate a little bit more than the sellers that had a medium and they were listing it for like 600 or something. So I decided to get a large and then just tailor it if need be. It pretty much fit when I got it, but I'm glad I left myself enough time because what I ended up doing was rewatching the episode and then I saw how it fit on Serena and I could see that her fingertips went past the hem of the dress. So that's how I figured out like this is maybe just a little bit too long. It was 
taken up a little bit by my tailor. Again, this was all in my birthday vlog, so this might be redundant for some of you. I'm glad I did that. It was the right decision. Serena wore this dress with like black tights and I think like black little mini boots and like a leather jacket. Like she definitely styled it down a little bit more, whereas I wore it with just bare legs, a clear shoe, these like huge butterfly earrings. My hair was like all blown out. It was the perfect dress to like dance the night away on my birthday at Butterfly with like all my best friends. Like it was so much fun. That was just such an amazing magical night. So I'm gonna leave the vlog link down below if you wanna check it out because now I'm thinking my birthday's in like a month and a half this year and I'm like, what am I gonna do now? How am I gonna top last year? I have no idea. Anyway, she's great. She's fabulous. This next dress I will say say very confidently is probably my favorite dress that I own. This dress and like maybe the Amber from Realization Par or the Gia from Realization Par. Like I just can't explain it. I can't explain it to you. I've worn it this year alone since I got it four times. This was a backup option to wear on my birthday last year. I did get it on time, but I decided to go with the gold one. I think I made the right decision. I wore this to the Met Young members party this year. I also wore it to a holiday party at the French consulate just like a couple weeks ago. So so that vlog will be linked down below if you want to see it. I show it a little bit more. But then I also wore it like one night out to the jazz club. I wore it out to Bijou one night. When I put this dress on, I knew that I had found a real gem because it fits me like a glove. It feels like it was made for my body. And so I just feel absolutely perfect and precious in it. I haven't even given you any details about the dress because I'm so excited, but hold on. It's Nanette Lepore, which again is a designer that I don't really think about anymore. But when I remember being in middle school and high school, Nanette Lepore was like such a major name. So it was fun to like go back and see some of her pieces and find them on the secondhand market. This dress is called the Beaded Magic Wand Dress if you wanna find it. It was incredibly hard to find though. I finally found it on eBay for $149 in black in a size six. And I decided to take a chance. And like I said, it fits like a glove. So I'm glad that the six worked out. Blair wears this dress in pret a poor J, which is season two, episode eight, when her and Chuck LOL, go to Bemelman's bar at the Carlisle to get a drink after school, which is exactly what you would do when you're like 15 years old, right? Like, ugh, totally. Anyway, in this scene, the dress, you guys, looks purple. It looks purple. And then there's another scene where she's in the limo wearing the dress, calling Dan, and the dress looks purple. It looks purple. I have never seen this dress in purple. I've seen it in black a couple places, but I have never seen it in purple. So again, this is another moment where I'm like, do we think maybe the lighting just made it look purple? Or is there a purple one? I don't know. So for a while, I was trying to find the purple one and then I couldn't and I just gave up. But I'm glad I went with black because like I said, it's been such a go-to dress for me when I simply cannot, like there was one night I was going out with Carrie and I felt so low self-esteem. I was like just not having a good day and I was really frustrated about outfits and I was like, you know what, F it. I'm just gonna wear my Nanette Lepore dress. It immediately like turned the night around. I felt amazing. I can't begin to explain to you how beautiful this dress is. It's so intricate. There's beading all along the collar here and here. There's beading all down the back. Back. I love something with a little sequin, a little embellishment. It looks super special and it just looks so elevated. The flutter sleeves are so flattering. I think I need to find more things with flutter sleeves because my arms are like my biggest insecurity. The bust line is super flattering. I don't know if you're able to see, but it sort of comes up in the middle, like right between your boobs, which I think is just a really flattering style. And I think that's like more of a vintage cut that I don't think people really tend to do that much anymore with this like empire waist thing. But again, I love this challenge because it gave me this beautiful beaded dress that I feel so comfortable in and is nothing like anything else that I own. And honestly, not like what I see other people wearing either. Like I feel very special when I wear this dress, whether it's for a super nice occasion or just going out on a Friday night. I'm not sure how much it would have retailed for initially, but the 140-ish price point felt completely fine to me because when I think about my other silk dresses, like my Realization Par dresses cost more than that. Things that I have from Revolve cost more than than that. When comparing how much is a normal dress that I would wear on a night out, it was completely fine. I just like didn't expect it to become like my favorite dress. I love it. This one is just, it's my favorite, honestly. This next dress is Catherine Melandrino. Definitely not a designer that I paid a whole lot of attention to when I was younger. It has been fun kind of going down the rabbit hole and looking at some of her designs. I got this dress in a 10, but let me tell you why. I don't know if this dress was only made in petite, 
but that's all I could find. Every listing of this dress and every color under the sun was petite, petite, petite. And I'm not petite, I'm 5'6". And I tend to wear very high shoes. So I was really worried that it would be too short. And when I decided that I wanted to get this dress, I figured I should size up and get it tailored if anything, because I'm not petite. I don't exactly know the name of this dress, but the embroidery on the chest and on the bottom, I thought they were flowers, you guys, they're butterflies, which if you know me, is so special and so me. Once I realized that there were butterflies, I knew I had to get this dress. This one is a really deep cut, okay? Because Serena wears this dress in season two, episode five, the Serena also rises, but it's when she's photographed on page six with Poppy Lipton. So like the only sight of this dress is in a magazine when they're all reading about her and Poppy's night out on page six. There are other photos of Blake Lively wearing it though when she's like going to set. That's how I was able to see exactly what the dress was and it looks so incredibly flattering on her. I tend to like things with a plunge sort of cut that have like a little bit of support here. I feel like that's how I'm comfortable. And the one that Serena wears is yellow, but I famously hate yellow. This dress also comes in obviously purple, a sort of like greenish teal color and a black, and then also a deep pink, but it has like multicolor butterflies like rainbow and I did not like that. I felt like I was either gonna go for the teal or the purple. I found a lot of different listings in a ton of different sizes, but like I said, they were all petite. I ended up going with this one which was a 10 and then I got it tailored quite a bit and I got it on Poshmark for $40 Okay $40. And all I really had to do was get it taken in a little bit at the side and then a little bit here on the straps so that it like supported my boobs a little bit more. And then we left the length like just how it is and it's perfect. I wore this out in the summertime with like my little Zara heels and just a little clutch. Sorry, but I looked so cute. I looked so cute and I looked so fun. So I feel like this is a perfect just little summer dress. I would definitely dress it down with like flip flops if I was on vacation on a beach somewhere. I think it looks it's really special and really sweet with like a heel for a night out. The butterflies of it all are just absolutely so preciosa. Like, look, can you see? Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, last one. So this dress is Dolce & Gabbana. Blair wore it in season two, episode 21, Seder Anything. She's wearing it with this like Jennifer Bear headband when she goes to Trip and Maureen's rehearsal dinner. And she has like a big confrontation with Nate's grandfather, William Vanderbilt. And then she's like wearing it in a couple scenes with Nate after that. I found it randomly on the Real Real for $170. I wasn't looking for this dress, honestly. Like it's a bit more conservative than I normally like to be. The color palette it's nice, but it's not like, I don't know. I just, I had other things on my list that I was looking for. But what ended up happening is I was looking for something else on the real real and I found this dress and I thought to myself, wait, that looks exactly like the dress that Blair wears. And I looked on the other little Poshmark accounts, the Casa Pro ones, and I saw that people were selling this dress for like $700. And I was like, oh, well, let me just buy it then. This dress is a little bit big on me. I think it was like a 10 or something. It's an Italian 46, which is definitely not my size. I just kind of saved it in my closet for some random special occasion. And I did end up wearing it with my friends. If you saw my holiday vlog where I also wore the metal core dress, I wore this to the Russian tea room. We had like a little holiday tea, my girlfriends and I. I don't know if I really filmed clips of myself. We didn't take that many photos, so I'll insert what I have, but I definitely think I need to take it in. Like I'd forgotten that I'd ordered it large and I had never gotten it tailored. It's fine. Like it's not way too big or anything. I feel like it might be a little long on me and I could take it in on the sides a tiny bit, but it looked okay for the day. Like nobody really cared. Blair wears it, like I said, with like an embellished headband and her hair is up, but I wore it with like a giant black satin bow and a half up these little silver shoes that I have from Zara that look super cute. While I don't grab for this a lot, it still feels like a special piece to own. And I like knowing that I have something a bit more conservative to grab for in the event that I need to be a little more conservative, a little Miss Fancy girl. Do you know what I mean? Like those occasions don't often come about, but when they do, it's nice to know that I have something that I can grab for. I honestly think this is a bit more suited for the spring. Maybe there'll be some, I don't know, someone's baby shower or something. I don't even know anyone who's like married, so I don't know why I would say that, but like, you never know. There could be something that comes about in the springtime this year where I could wear this. But it has really lovely pleating in the front. The darts along the bust are really nice. I think the ruffle is like a really interesting detail so that you don't need to wear a necklace or anything. It's sort of like this floral print, but it's also kind of looks like 
abstract art, like paint brush strokes or something like that. Like a Dolce dress for $170, not bad. So that's it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Again, it was kind of just something that I wanted to do to show off the pieces that I've thrifted this past year that were seen on Gossip Girl because it just feels like a full circle sort of thing for me to be able to wear this stuff like out and about in my life. It's great obviously to shop sustainably. It feels good to wear different designers and explore different silhouettes and to wear things that not everyone else is wearing. I get a ton of compliments when I wear the Nanette Lepore. Everyone wants to know where the Tory Burch jacket is from. It's been a lot of fun to wear these pieces out and about and it's honestly so much fun to like shop for this stuff. I have a running list. There's a couple of handbags that I'm trying to get that I just haven't found. Those are the hardest to find for me. It makes shopping so much more enjoyable and feels so much more rewarding and I feel like wearing the pieces feels more special so I would definitely encourage you guys. Obviously it doesn't have to be Gossip Girl but if there's another TV show or a movie that you're obsessed with, check out Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Old Tumblr, Tumblr blogs, even like Instagram accounts. There are so many people that are doing the hard work for you to find out where things are from and source them. I just go to those accounts. I find things that I like, I make note of them. And then every so often I just check different websites and kind of keep my eye on a few things, tab a few things, see if I can make a little offer here and offer there. When you finally get something, it's just so exciting. I think it can just be a fun challenge, a fun way to shop, definitely better for the environment. So that's it for me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're not already follow me on instagram everywhere else will be linked down below that's it i will see you in my next one bye kisses xoxo gossip girl <laughs>